Hello. Yesterday was spot someone using a SAS t-shirt from statistical analysis software. I would like to ask that person to come to me so we can chat a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm here to talk about CPAN grep. Now, essentially what I'm talking about is a recursive grep of whatever you decide across the whole of CPAN, which sounds somewhat simple, but CPAN is 108,000 modules in 25,000 distributions, so that's 25,000 tarballs, effectively. Um, so, yeah, and Perl itself. So, let's show it. So it's a website, you go to grep.cpan.me, and if the Wi-Fi is working, which it actually was, believe it or not, you uh, type something like that, and it doesn't find many uh, matches. Actually, I did this at, um, when I gave this talk at London PM, and it turns out I typoed that, but I found that Tom had also typoed it, so I thought that was quite amusing, and I thought I'd leave it in the talk. So if I fix the typo, I now find what I expected, and Lucex get opt itself is first. So actually, it turns out I'm searching for with, and then either a single or double quote followed by Lucex get opt. So that's things that are using that role anywhere on CPAN. So basically, by looking at what source code might be and think, saying to myself, okay, if I was going to write that, I'd write that code. I can find examples. So this is really quite useful as a way of finding examples of code on CPAN or you know, you just want to see how you use something, you can type it in and find an answer. Um, but it's also quite interesting for people doing core hackery and stuff. So if I search for rather complex regex that's actually assignments to a particular macro, um, I can find cases of where that's used. So that's quite useful. But also, I can search within documentation on multiple lines. So actually, here I'm looking for foo in the first line after a head segment. I mean, it's an example I probably could do better, but um, this one's quite nice. So I, there's lots of modules on CPAN <coughs> excuse me, that are using the Flickr API, but they're not always called the most sensible name, and you know, you're not sure exactly what they, they'll be, but you know they're using the API endpoint. So you search for the name of the API endpoint, and you find seven of seven distributions that are using them. Um, now, there's also an API, which isn't really used very much yet, but I'm trying to encourage people to use it. So if you've got ideas, talk to me. Um, now, you'll notice up here it's got duration. So 2.7 seconds to search across the whole of CPAN. I'm quite happy with that. How do I achieve it? Um, Basically, I split up the whole of CPAN into lots of files, and then it uses Redis behind the scenes to actually um, remember the offset in the files that I've built of where the data is. So that way, I can run a regex across a few files, which is much faster than lots of files. So it actually works quite fast. And there's a web front end which uses Web Simple. Um, Redis is kind of the main thing behind the scenes. And then these matcher processes run several at once, so I can make use of all the CPUs on a box. So it's quite nice, it scales quite nicely. Um, a few Perl modules. Um, RE2 is really the, <coughs> excuse me again. Um, RE2 is really the key to this. It actually is much faster than Perl regex, and I aim to have four gigs of text in memory and search it with, you know, within about two seconds, depending how complex the regex is. Um, so, as I said, development, finding abusers of modules, amusement, all that kind of thing. Um, you know, people hate things, there's lots of hate, so you can find the 112 distributions where someone hates something. <laughs> yes, okay, C C CGI, that's a good, good example there. Um, so, the thing I haven't really covered is it now supports complex searches, so you can look for a file without a particular file. So CPAN modules are laid out and with like slash lib directory and such. 
So you might ignore that, but search the other thing, or you want to look for a particular extensions, which can use regex. Um, I really like this example, and Doi's not paying attention, but um, yeah, basically um, win an argument by saying, look at this. So I was quite happy with that on P5P. Um, so yeah, tools are valuable, data from the tools can win arguments, shorter arguments, more productivity, or more elaborate bike shedding. Thank you. Whatever. I was going to show you some pictures, but uh, my laptop is not liking the protector. Um, anyway, so during last year's YAPSI Europe, um, oh, during last year's Twin City Pearl Workshop in Vienna and Bratislava, uh, there were a group of Vienna, P Vienna uh, Pearl Hackers going to Bratislava by train, and we were discussing stuff, and we discovered a lot of the people actually liked Pearl a lot, of course, because they were on a Pearl conference, and they liked cycling. Um, and so uh, we, did, we decided to uh, start a new non-geographic group called bicycle.pm. Um, I can't show you the nice pictures of the logo, but I can show you the nice t-shirt. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> um, which is actually UTF-8 code, so it's valid Perl code, um, because they're UTF-8 characters for cars and bicycles and stuff. Um, there's a website, it's called bicycle.pm. Yes, you can do that. You can register the domain name in whatever the French, uh, do you know what, what's the name of it? Saint Pierre something. <laughs> They have a top-level domain called .pm, so you can register, if you're a European citizen at least, you can register, register domain names there. So there's bicycle.pm, and there's an IRC channel, and yeah, if you're interested in bicycling and uh, cycling and uh, Perl, you can um, join the IRC channel, the mailing list, or visit the website. Thank you. By the way, if you'd like to hack on Perl 6, <laughs> go to perl6.org or join us on the irc.frito.net pound Perl 6. We need the same skills, people who know C, but our core is written in Perl 6. So if you don't want to do C but like hacking on core Perl, then maybe Perl 6 is the thing for you. Thank you. Well, luckily I do actually have some pictures, so we'll see them later. This is not a technical talk, but in some ways it is. It's about maintaining the hardware that sits underneath the brains that actually do your programming. So, let's think about the body for a second. It's a piece of legacy hardware. It's not automatable. It's been around for thousands of years and not much has changed. So it needs a little bit of love and attention to keep it functioning smoothly. Why would you want to do that? To give you a body that lets you do what you want to do, that doesn't get in your way but is there to help you when you want to do something. It does it for you. And if you don't make time to look after your body now, you'll have to make time to be sick later. So a few years ago, I'd been living in America. I was overweight, getting no exercise, not doing anything. My wife finally convinced me to join up with the gym. I lost 20 kilos in one year with just a few simple diet changes, cutting out cheese mostly, um, getting along to gym classes and riding my bike. Yay. I was riding to work an hour and 15 minutes each way. And it's amazing what it did. I've got a couple of pictures for you <laughs> of the change. And of course, being who I am, I went overboard. I now teach weightlifting classes at gym. Because, you know, if you're going to do it, why not get paid to show up? So that's my hobby. That the, yeah. <laughs> this is the scientific bit. The research says you need to do about four hours a week of lifting your heart rate to keep your body nice and fit. And if you put some weight training in there, then that helps too because muscle mass builds up. So these are just little things. It's not that much, four hours out of your week. If you take that time away from your hacking, it will actually give you a better brain and a better body to get on with stuff. So awesome, find something you enjoy. That's really important. It's really important that it's something you enjoy doing because otherwise you won't do it. The motivation to keep coming back and doing exercise is because you enjoy it, right? Last year, at Yapsi, I was training for the half marathon in Oslo. I'm not a runner. I hadn't done it. I, took, I ran Sunday when I arrived. I ran Tuesday morning early before the conference. And Thursday morning, I went for an eight-kilometer run. During that time, I turned around from having pain in my knees and thinking, I can't do this, to actually my body kind of adjusted, and it was OK. 
At the end of that run, that third day run, I met up with a bunch of Pearl people because I decided I'll spend the day in Riga. And they said, let's go to the beach. So we hired bikes and we rode 50 kilometers to the beach. Here's a photo of the early morning running over the bridges. Beautiful. Riding bikes along all the way out to the beach where it was a lovely day. The sun was shining. We sat around drinking nice drinks and had a fantastic time. I could only do that because my body was there to support me. So that's why we need to think about maintaining the hardware as well. And of course, you have to reward yourself. <laughs> it's so cheap in Latvia. My next challenge is to get enough sleep. This one's a hard one for all of us. <laughs> Thank you very much. See, me doing when. All right, cool. So I'm back. Right, OK. Uh, I want to talk about Fat Packer. How many people here heard about it but do not know what it does or ha haven't used it? That's it? Everyone used it? Oh, OK. That makes more sense. All right. So Fat Packer. Um, Sawyer, of course, we know, right? OK. Um, so Fat Packer, you know, for packing. Yeah? All right. Um, so what does it do? Fat Packer tracks your dependencies. It bundles them all, them all up. And then it puts everything, it packs everything into a single file. Everything. Why would you want this? Well, first of all, you got to ship code, right? You got to handle dependencies, I hope. And sometimes we don't have local lib there. Sometimes we don't have CPAN there. And sometimes we have some weird corporate considerations. I worked at a company, which I will not name, that said you can write modules, but you cannot put them remotely. You could use them remotely. You just can't put them there. Nor could you use something like the PAR remote, which allows me to use stuff on the wire automatically. No, you can't do that. So I had to, do, to, to get creative. All right, uh, sometimes we have really odd users. and Sometimes we have regular users. We just want to be friendlier and ship an application that is self-contained, like CPAN minus. That's self-contained. And that's very useful for a lot of people. Of course, object remote is the actual reason the Fat Packer was written for, and none of the above, or sort of all of the above. But um, object remote is another reason I will not get into. And you should uh, check it out in Meta CPAN. That's another good reason that's more complex to explain. And now, how does it work? The thing is, I really like Fat Packer, and I was really interested in the way it works. And reading about it kind of blew my head up for a bit. But then I really thought that it would be something maybe other people would be interested in. First of all, you trace a uh, script. And it, what it does is use the tracer here. And the tracer uses B which is the back end for the compiler. And the import function calls B minus C. And P, B minus C basically activates, you know how you run Perl and just compile check for something? So using B minus C like that, that's, that's what it means. It says, from now on, I'm just going to run into compile mode. And that's kind of tricky because from now on, no code is going to run. So yes, I can find all the, the modules that you're going to load, and I'm not going to run your code but I will not be able to actually do something with what I found because I can't run anything, except for some blocks. Does anyone what knows what runs even under compilation? <laughs> Thank you. What else? Check. Check. There you go. There it is. So the problem with begin, it runs even if you just run compilation. The problem with, with it is that it, it's compile time. However, there is the check block. And the check block is post compile time, post import. So you can run things after the import, after everything has been compiled and you've loaded all the modules that you need, excluding require and lazy loading. So it does this thing where it has a check block and then it uses checks for a file and otherwise it's, uh, it dies and then it goes through your inc, your include, and it checks for the initial include and it's able to print out whatever you loaded in your script, which is really cool. The next step is to get pack lists for. And packlist4 does a cat on the, on the trace and push everything to a file. It looks kind of like this. Packlists contain the modules that a distribution installed. If I do a cat for a packlist for HTTP tiny, I can see that it installed just HTTP tiny and a manual for it. So this is what it gets. It gets HTTP tiny. Now it knows it needs that distribution. The next thing is tree. And if I give a tree um, the packlists, it will say, that's cool, I can find the stuff for it. So it creates a tree of all the distributions. Once I run it, I see they created a fat lib directory. Inside it, you have HTTP tiny, which requires carp, which requires carp heavy. So we create a tree of all these modules, right? There you go. 
so he knows what to pack. And the next step is obviously to create a file. So we do a pack file, uh, a, a fat pack file, which creates a file of that directory. Then I add on top of it, or at the end of it, I guess, depends how you look at it, my script, and then I push everything into a new file. That's it. And then I got, I get a new file. So I <coughs> just pack everything. The way it packs it, it looks like this. There's a begin block, then it has a hash for all of the pack stuff, and then it just gives indexes for everything and then packs the modules in there, okay? Then it removes the spaces and it puts everything into ink where there are uh, subroutines that pop up and create the files automatically and use them. One warning, only supports pure Perl, which means if you're using Cess, sucks for to be you. <laughs> and in summary, trace the file, pack list for the cat, cat the file and pack list for it, then tree that one and just file. That's it, that's the entire steps. So thank you, that's Freddie yeah. Mercury. Thank you to all the Lightning Talk speakers. They were great. <laughs> That's it for today. I'm looking forward to a nice cold drink in Cafe Extra Blatt. See you there.